Right, so today I wanted to talk about um, European axes and the wider context. There's a lot said about American axes and how they evolved um, as uh, you know people settled in America and the big logging industry and all that kind of thing over there. But there's very little said about why European axes are designed the way they are. You know, if you go in most forums, you get very, very vague answers and people just have some basic theories and just kind of cop out answers such as it's just a tradition or culture or something like that that there's they can't really explain the practical aspects of it so after using some very strange and unique european axes and trying them out uh, as work axes you know some of them can feel quite awkward at first but then you start to understand uh, why they are the way they are so one of the key things to understand is how that uh, logging techniques have changed um, over the course of history. If you look at the typical American style of logging, um, you cut much higher up on the stump. That's due to them not being so worried about wastage. You know, there's so much timber, you don't need to get every last ounce out of it. And it's you generally go for the quickest way to cut the tree down. And that's generally a higher stump. Um, it gives you a better hinge because you're not cutting down into where the roots are and all that kind of thing. I mean, that's really one of the big reasons for springboard cutting is it gets you up and above all those nasty grain of the roots and um, you'll get a much better hinge out of that tree. And, uh, you know, cutting down in that nasty grain is, is quite uh, a lot more difficult than cutting in uh, clear wood that the chips in nasty grain where it's all twisted don't pop out you don't get much penetration um, it's just generally a lot harder so that's why you'll see the use of springboards a lot more in uh, in America and Australia for logging whereas in Europe the context is there's a real timber shortage you want to cut that stump down as low as possible um, just to get out of as much of that tree as possible especially in hardwoods where you know it's very valuable for construction of ships and buildings there's a saying that uh, six inches at the bottom is worth six foot at the top and uh, that probably is quite correct so so for the american style of logging you want a, a nice balanced axe that's uh, going to chop into that nice clear wood where the, the chips pop out it doesn't stick is um, going to get the penetration and uh, you know, if you, especially if you're on a springboard, that balance of the axe becomes very important, and that's why I think you'll see a lot more double bits in use, and especially axes of poles and all that. The, you know, the American axes are really specialised for heavy chopping in uh, in wood where the the grain is straight. Um, it, it you know it's hard to get an axe to stick when you're cutting down at a stump and that's something i've found is if you take a thin axe and go out back and uh if you've got an old stump and uh, try and cut it flush with the ground and you'll see that your axe rarely if ever sticks because that twisted grain it doesn't uh have a big uh, chip that can sit back on the axe and stick it so for the european style of felling which is much lower down on the stump i think that's why you won't see as much emphasis on uh, wedgie patterns. Um, it's very really hard to get the axe to stick in that kind of felling. So you go for thinner patterns that can get that penetration in that twisted wood. And that also is why you'll see uh, very, very long bitted axes. You know, such as my Berlin axe. Um, there's other axes like the French, I think they call them Cogni, uh, I'm not too sure. You can still buy them today from Muller. But it's a very, very long bitted thin axe with a very, very small bit of only like 9 centimeters, And that's really to concentrate the energy and get the penetration on the tough twisted wood right down at the bottom of the stump. And you'll see that in old footage of them cutting very, very low stumps. The longer the axe is as well... Um, the less likely it is to glance and you'll notice that most of the swings they use for felling in the European style uh, are almost vertical there's very little horizontal use so the balance of the axe and having a pole becomes less important 
but having that longer bit if you take a some a, like a very thick short bit of axe like a tasmanian pattern or a racing axe or something like that you'll find that it's very very easy to make the axe glance if you come in at a too shallow an angle like um too perpendicular with the wood it's very easy to glance the axe it um can be quite dangerous but if you have a longer bit of axe that angle um you can come in much shallow and the axe will still grip and I mean like bite at that shallow angle and that's really the key thing you know these long bitted axes if you try and use them in the uh, standard type of felling you'll see now where you're cutting a bit higher or in the old American footage um, you'll find that axe to be extremely awkward but if you try it in the European style of felling in the context they use them for it's actually a very very effective tool and I think that's why they they stayed around so long so generally you'll see uh, very very long bitted thin axes um, with a very small bit if it's like three and a half four pounds and then you also see axes used for a similar role such as the big Welsh patterns and they have a wider bit um, you also see some similar French axes used for the same role uh, similar to the Welsh patterns, you know, same idea, six, seven, eight pounds. Very long bitted and thin with no pole, very unbalanced. But uh, yeah, they're used again similarly. And I think the reason why they went for eight pounders is you've doubled the edge length over like something like the nine centimeter Berlin pattern or Cogney's. Um, so you need to increase the weight to get the same penetration. And it's also a little bit of a different style you'll generally see them used for where it's felling in conjunction with a saw. So I think once they brought the saw into fell with, you're not swinging it as long. So you can increase the weight, increase the edge length. And, uh, you know, you're not using that axe enough to really get massively tired. Whereas the axes used before saws became common were much longer bitted and thinner, you know, with a, with a shorter edge as well. So I think that uh, issue of trying to get the axe to grip really explains the longer bitted axes used in Europe for felling. It's an effective tool for the context used. If you try and use it in the context of American felling, then you'll see it's really awkward. It's unbalanced. It has a short bit that doesn't pull out big chips. So I think that explains the evolution of the axe. When you when uh, axemen went to America, they're felling a different style. They're felling at a much faster pace. And... Uh, it was pretty obvious they needed a different kind of tool. So something else I've noticed as well is in America, you might have an axeman who will carry only one axe. Your uh, American woodcutters will either have a boy's axe if they're cutting pulp wood under 12 inches, or they prefer a heavier axe if they're cutting uh, larger trees. Some regions preferred, you know, like four pound single bits. Others had double bits, Puget Sounds, all that kind of thing. Really, you know, a bit better for whatever wood they were cutting. But they're all fairly similar. And it, you don't really see um, the axemen carrying two axes. In Europe, it's quite common to see axemen carrying two axes. And they have one of those long, uh, small-edged um, axe patterns, you know, like the Berlin pattern for felling the tree and taking it down and then they also have a separate axe which is used for taking the branches off and uh, debarking and more general work. That axe will also have a shorter handle so what they're doing really is carrying twice as many tools but they're increasing their efficiency because the tools they're using are more specialized for the for the different roles. So while European axemen might carry two axes in America um, what they do instead is have two men carrying one axe and uh, specialize the roles of the men so you know in America you had um, fellas who would specialize in cutting down the tree and they were more highly paid um, they were more skilled experienced men who could drop that tree exactly where they wanted it so because it's been more on higher wages you wouldn't want them wasting time not felling trees and instead going around clearing brush and cutting up limbs and that sort of thing so Instead, you'd bring in swampers who were lower paid, less experienced, and um, they would take on that role. So, you know, some felling patterns of American axe are much thinner bitted, longer, such as the Puget Sound, and then a swamping axe is wider bitted and uh, better suited for cutting limbs. So, 
you know, Americans have tackled that problem with uh, having specified roles rather than just one man carrying two axes. Something I also wanted to go on a tangent about is looking at uh, old logging uh, versus what we do in the Coralwood Challenge. In logging, you're not really doing that much bucking unless it's like small firewood. Even for pulpwood, you leave it a bit longer. So there's not as many bucking cuts in logging as we do in the Coralwood Challenge because you want to keep the logs as long as possible for as long as possible. Every time you cut that timber down, shorter you're limiting the potential of uses it could be used for and sold so logs are generally kept as large as possible to ease with transport and also um, to keep them useful you know you can't uh, turn a short log back into a long piece of timber so I think that's an important reason why um, loggers generally preferred 36 inch handles versus what we do which is better to use a short handle because most of your work is bucking so anyway there's another kind of weird design of axe you'll see quite commonly in Europe and it's uh, basically like the Hartzer pattern or the Cogni patterns um, they've kind of got like a, a very very distinct and strange shape to them now the reason why I think the design like that is I previously made a video on the Hudson Bay axe and how that the extended um, heel with the eye basically flat with the the toe causes a, a lever that causes the handle to become loose now the design of the hearts racks and similar patterns that allows you to have a wider edge with a small eye but it's it puts the uh, heel of the axe more central with the uh, with the eye of the axe without um, causing an excessive lever and it uh, allows you to keep that wide edge but also have a wide edge without flaring the bit like a fan shape which can be effective but also has its own problems such as that uh, fan shape axe is quite uh, susceptible to damage so you can reinforce those corners have your wide edge and also still keep that blip, that bit uh, central with the um, the eye so I think that design is really designed to stop the handle coming as loose as often as you'll see with the Hudson Bay axe which is they're really trying to attempt to do the same thing which is have a wider bit of axe uh, without increasing weight by having to have a massive eye as well you also see this with the finish axe it's, it's got quite a distinct shape and if you look at it and draw some lines on it you'll notice that the the bit has been more centralized uh, into the the eye so that um, it's not causing a lever that's causing the handle to come loose or potentially increase breakages. Once you start seeing that you'll see that a lot of European axe patterns their shape is really designed to uh, tackle several problems like whether you want a wider bit or a more robust bit without pointed corners or whatever but also to have an axe that has a smaller eye um, allowing you to put more of that steel into edge length there's a lot of other European axes and you'll get a lot of uh, general purpose uh, chopping axes like wedge patterns, um, flat wedges such as Calabria or a lot of the English axes have a, a wedge pattern. And yeah, th these are just general good all round forestry axes. Um, you know, Finnish axes is another one that's a, a, a general purpose wedge. And uh, I think these are used for really a similar role to the American axe um, people who just want to go out and cut firewood and do everything with one axe rather than you know a, a professional uh, axeman whose job is to cut down big oak trees and big beech trees for uh, timber and he's a, a professional who does it all the time you know they might have a, a long bit axe and a, a thin uh, limbing axe and just more specialized tools for the different work he's doing whereas some other cultures they might not need that so, certainly Finland you're not having big massive trees um, generally more smaller birch trees cut for firewood you know the, the wedge pattern's great for it you also see a lot of uh, European patterns that are popular such as the Kent pattern and uh, various Russian axes and East, Eastern European patterns and uh, they can do a bit of everything they're not really good heavy choppers 
but what they are is good general purpose axes with an emphasis on carpentry as you know if you're in a an area where you don't have access to a lot of giant timber and you don't really need a big felling axe because you're not a professional lumberjack um most of what you're going to be doing with your axes uh construction work um you know especially cultures where you had to make everything yourself so if you need to build furniture or build your own log cabin or whatever you might want a pattern that's got a wider edge you're not really considering having a pole or having an axe that cuts timber really really efficiently it it needs to be a good carpentry and general tool so i think that explains certainly a lot of those sort of patterns where it's uh you know you try and use it for cutting down a tree and it's not very effective but um it, it could be quite an effective general purpose crafting tool some american patterns in particular the cedar pattern axe have became quite sought after and they were uh, quite a different pattern for most american axes and it's i think they're very reminiscent of the european ideas on axe design so the cedar pattern is a much wider bit smaller eye um originally designed for cutting they call them cedar in texas but uh, it's actually a juniper uh, very, very scrubby small stem tangled trees and it's quite uh, similar work to what coppice is really and a lot of european axes designed for cutting coppice and uh, you can see the americans using four pound 36 inch axes for this work and uh, finding them very inefficient and the workers started complaining and a new axe design was sought to uh, to complete the work a, a bit better and uh, they basically came up with a very similar axe to a European axe. So I think that uh, for the modern world some of the design aspects in European axes are far more useful than uh, the, the context that uh, American axes were designed for. You know, people aren't doing a lot of heavy logging anymore with axes. I mean, apart from trail crews, nobody's really doing heavy chopping. Um, axes are becoming more popular for smaller work, cutting small trees, craft work, uh, limbing. Just uh, what you really need is a, is a general purpose pattern with a wide bit, maybe a bit thinner. You know, you're not worried about pulling out great big chips. Um or having a, a particularly sticky axe uh, so you know the European axe designs are in my opinion far more effective than a lot of American designs they optimize the use of the steel better for edge length rather than having you know uh, a three and a half inch bit and a pole uh, on a two pound axe I'd rather have a four and a half inch bit and no pole you know that's my preference i find that a far more effective tool for light work so i think you can uh understand now that there's a lot more to european axes than meets the eye they're not just awkward poorly fought out tools i think they're quite ingenious and when you understand the context of how they're used it makes sense so i hope this is of interest and uh should make some quite good discussion of course i've been able to try out a lot of weird patterns but i would like to try out potentially some more in the future and um you know sometimes it's uh quite good to find some sources of their use and uh, obviously my uh, languages i'm able to read are quite limited so if anyone from you know germany or france or italy or wherever has some input um, that would be really interested to hear. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed.